guys, it's Anna from Bright Lane Gardens and today is an awesome day because we are planting one of my favorite flowers which also happens to be a favorite among the monarch butterflies and that is the common milkweed plant. So I'm sure you're familiar with common milkweed. It's a favorite among native gardeners, including myself, and has numerous ecological benefits for its local ecosystem, including, of course, our favorite monarch butterflies. Milkweed is actually the only type of plant that monarch butterflies can lay their larvae, and this is a primary food source for monarch butterflies and other pollinators as well. So this is a cornerstone native species of your backyard, and I highly encourage you to grow these anywhere that you possibly can. You might be familiar with these fluffy little seeds that come out of the large seed pods that hang off of the plant in late summer and early fall. And today I'm going to show you how to go from this and grow it into this. There's a few crucial steps that we need to take before we can successfully grow common milkweed. Today I'm going to show you those steps offer some tips for success, talk about the soil blend that I like to use, and by the end of this journey, we should have some successful milkweed plants growing in our own backyards. Without further ado, let's get started. Inside this little baggie here are a bunch of chili seeds that I pulled out of the fridge just a couple minutes ago. These seeds have actually been in my refrigerator for about 30 days, and now they're ready to be planted. Why were these seeds in my refrigerator? Well, milkweed is one of those native plants that does require a cold stratification period. Cold stratification is this germination process that a lot of native plants use to help determine when the plant should come out of dormancy and start to actually germinate. Now, this is a defense mechanism for a lot of seeds, especially up here in northern Michigan, because we have such harsh winters. So basically, it prevents the seed from coming out of dormancy prematurely before it can successfully germinate in the spring. Now, since we're growing these seeds indoors, we have to fake that cold stratification period. And the easiest way to do that is inside of your refrigerator. Common milkweed can usually get away with a cold stratification period of about 30 days. So I put these in on February 1st. It's now the end of February, and these guys should be ready to be planted up. Inside of this folded paper towel here, you'll notice I have a coffee filter. And inside of this coffee filter are my seeds. I prefer to use coffee filters as my medium to keep my seeds moist during that cold stratification period because it doesn't leave any lint or residue on my seeds once they're removed. When I cold stratify my seeds, I do like to do a check on them about once a week. I'm checking for two things. First of all, I want to make sure that the coffee filter and the paper towel around the coffee filter are both decently moist without any water straight up dripping off of them. This moist period mimics that melting snow that's on top of the seed. So we want to make sure that there's enough moisture in there to keep the seeds wet, but not too much that it would cause a mold growth. The next thing that I'm looking for is I want to make sure that none of my seeds are germinating. This can sometimes happen where they'll actually start to sprout while they're still in the refrigerator. If you do notice that at any time, you're going to want to go ahead and pull that full packet out of the refrigerator and plant up as much as you can. That's your best way to salvage those ones that have already germinated. If the germinated seed is left in the fridge for too long, it simply won't sprout and that seed will no longer be viable. I just checked these ones here and none of them have germinated. They all look thoroughly moist and I have no signs of mildew or mold growth. So these ones here are ready to be planted up. The quality of your seedling starter mix is very important when it comes to starting seeds indoors. I like to blend up my own mix using 75% of a well-draining medium, such as coco coir, and 25% of a heavier, moisture-rich soil, like an organic garden soil blend. For a full video on how I create my own seedling starter mix, check out this video above. I use this mix for all of my native plants, including my common milkweed. Since I already have my soil mixed up in this tote behind me, I'm going to go ahead and fill up my seed starting trays. Once 
Once your trays are filled with soil, you'll want to go ahead and make a very small divot in the top of that soil. The general rule of thumb for native seeds is you want to plant the seed no deeper than the seed is wide. So for most seeds, that's a very small amount, an eighth of an inch or less. You want to really be cautious not to plant native seeds too deep. Think about how they would grow out in the wild. When the seed is released, it usually just sits right there on top of the soil. Perhaps a little bit of debris will be sprinkled on top, but for the most part, that seed has open access to be able to experience the sun, get as much moisture as necessary, and doesn't have to work that hard to poke up through the top layer of soil there. So we wanna keep that in mind when we're considering planting depth for any seeds indoors as well. I'm going to go ahead and take the tip of this strange mini shovel, but you can use anything like a stick or a pair of scissors, whatever is available to you. And I'm going to make a very small slit in the top of my soil for each of these cubes. Once you've made the divots in your soil, you can go ahead and start planting your seeds. Milkweed seeds, thankfully, are not super small, so for the most part, you can pick them up with your fingers. If you do have larger fingers or don't feel comfortable picking them up with your fingers, you can use a pair of tweezers or anything like that. Just make sure you don't squeeze the seeds so hard that you rupture the shell. I like to place two seeds in each compartment. Native seeds don't have a very high germination rate in general, so it's always good to have some backups just in case. Once you have all of your seeds planted, I like to just use the very pads of my fingers to gently roll the top of the soil over the seed. There's no need to pat these down into the soil, and if the full seed isn't covered, that's okay. Fortunately, in an indoor environment, you don't have your usual predators like birds to come and seal your seeds out of the soil. Next, I want to make sure I'm labeling my plants. A lot of seedlings, especially native plant seedlings, look identical for the first few months of life. So in order to give your seedlings exactly their growing requirements that they need, you'll want to make sure you're labeling them so you can tell which tray is which plant. We have one final step before we place our tray on our heated seedling mat, and that is going to be to give them a really thorough watering. If you are planting a lot of seedlings like I am, I recommend investing in one of these misters like this. It's powered with a pump function and can spray a significantly larger area than a traditional spray bottle can. It'll greatly shorten your watering time overall. Trust me, it's a worthwhile investment. I will link this one in the description below just because this has been a favorite tool of mine since I started growing my natives from seed. Once your seeds are watered, you can go ahead and place a humidity dome over top. If you don't have a humidity dome like this, you can kind of DIY your own greenhouse setup using saran wrap and a couple sticks in the middle to create a tent. If you're interested in using any of the tray type setups that I'm using today, I will go ahead and link everything in the description down below. This has been the system that I've been using for many years now. It took me a little while to figure out just what type of seedling setup would work best for my needs. And this setup has been a great one for my native seedlings especially. I'm gonna come out and make sure I'm watering these guys at least every day, if not twice a day. If you are using a seedling heating mat underneath of your tray, your soil is a lot more likely to dry out more quickly than if you weren't using it. However, the heated mats can speed up that germination rate quite a bit too. So if you are using a heated mat, I do recommend checking morning and evening just to make sure your soil is consistently moist. If you're using a humidity dome like this, you'll want to make sure you're removing that dome or propping it for a couple hours a day to encourage some airflow and reduce your risk of mold or mildew growth. Once we've done everything, we can expect to start seeing some sprouts come up, usually within 10 to 12 days. Milkweed germinates a little bit faster than some of my other native plants, so it's especially rewarding to grow, and these guys will be blooming this summer. Milkweed is one of those plants that just keeps giving, and it easily reseeds for the following season as well. 
I'm gonna place these guys on a sunny windowsill. They don't require too much light until they start sprouting, but once they do start to sprout, you'll wanna make sure you have a nice LED grow light or a very sunny location to keep them in. We'll check back in on these guys in 10 to 12 days and see how many have germinated at that point. In the meantime, if you have any questions on my growing process for milkweed or any of my native seedlings, please leave them in the comment section below. And as always, I sure do appreciate your time here on our channel today. Thank you for supporting our small business, and I sure hope to catch you next time. Bye-bye.